Well, good afternoon, guys. I'm off on another little adventure. Um, I'm just walking down from Dizeth down to Melodin, and then I'm going to go up Melodin, Melodin hillside past the quarry there, over the tops of Prestighton Mountain, or Prestighton Hillside, should I say, and then continue on to my woods for a, a cheeky overnighter. Um, the weather's it's mild, a bit breezy, um, but I'm sure I'm going to warm up as soon as I hit this hillside. So, I'll carry on now and catch up with you in a bit. Okay, so, for those of you that don't know, this uh, path that I've been following goes all the way from Dizeth to Prestatin. It's an old railway track. Obviously disused now and it's been replaced, replaced with tarmac. But that place over there, I've just shown you, it used to be the good shed. And they're converting it into a cafe, I believe. And it's going to be called the Y Cafe, or the I Cafe. Because uh, I'm in Wales, all eyes are Y's, so it's Y Cafe. Bit confusing, but well, there we go. So yeah, this, uh, that's some evidence of the railway. I don't know if I can see it from this angle, but... Ah, oh, there we go. There's... I'm not sure what they're used for. I think it's a levelling. used to level. used for levelling the coal or whatever they was carrying. I think they used to carry copper, actually, from... Anyway, we're going to now leave the path and go up there. Okay, so this is Melodon Quarry. Climbed it myself in the past, and if you look about there, there's a ledge that goes all the way along, and this part is bolted um, a few bolts along there. I don't think any of that's bolted, it might be down the one I've climbed for a, a good few years. It's pretty high, pretty high when you get to the top. We're going to go up the path around the side and then along the top. So, not particularly fancy scaling that today. For those of you who don't know, that's what a bolt looks like. Um, that one's got a D-shackle on it, sometimes they do that and they put chains between them, but they're just driven into the rock and then glued in. Sorry about the camera work boys and girls. So yeah, that's what a bolt looks like. And that's up to the second, that's up to like the, 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 the level bit. Okay guys, so that's what I look like. Just let me get out of the way, there's a mountain biker coming. Hi right, mate, alright. Cheers. So yeah, so uh, you sacrifice your street cred when you uh, start making YouTube videos. He didn't think I looked particularly stupid, so there he goes anyway. Right, I'll catch you in a bit guys. As you can see guys, I've just come up the uh, hillside. I think this is an old miner's cottage. Um, 200 years old. Had two rooms and a kitchen. Used by mining families until this estate was sold in 1870s. Blah 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 blah. Now under the Denbyshire County Council services. Countryside services. So here's the remains of it. I mean, I've been here before, obviously. I just thought I'd come and show you guys this little area. Right on the top of Prestatin Hillside. That's where the fire would have been down there, I'd imagine. Or the cooker. But uh, yeah, I've seen similar, similar little cottages, obviously. It's my little visit to um, the Black, Black Country Museum for the week. So I can ima well imagine what it was like to live in here. Not very much room at all. Someone's been doing some logging as well, it looks like. All right, we'll continue on. Oh, look at all that rubbish. Everywhere you go, they always leave bloody rubbish, don't they? 
just no excuse for that there we go took a little detour guys hoping that I'd be able to find this it's uh, Fisher Caves so uh, I might even just have a quick look in there I've got my torch with me let's have a look what it says on this side mind you not fancy getting my feet wet through Fisher Mine uh, these limestone hills are rich seams of lead and zinc. Fish mine in Bishop's Wood, which is where, which is the woods we're in. It's just one of many shafts and tunnels that remain from the old mines. It was named after a fish-shaped spoil heap that once lay at the slopes below. All right. I knew it existed. I knew it was here, like, but. Um, Have a look. Uh, tell you what, these poles really do make it a lot easier to walk. Yeah, I have a feeling that it's going to get pretty wet in there. We can go in, I suppose, and have a quick little look. I've got two torches on the go. Don't know how far it goes in, like. It's quite eerie. I don't know if there's any rats down here either. I know people do cave down here, it's very echoey. People are thinking, Andy, you're bloody mad. I'll tell you what, yeah, I am thinking the same thing myself. Looks like it goes for miles. Be careful. I've come in quite far, guys, but. The water's just getting deeper and deeper. Hello! It goes for quite a way, I reckon. I'll have to come back with my wellies on. Now I know where, where it is. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty deep just here as well. Things I do for YouTube. Right, guys. That's have a quick quick drink now luckily my torches are at the top of my bag so I don't have to root through there we go back in the great outdoors so yeah I'll definitely uh, definitely come again investigate that a bit further I reckon right I'm gonna have a quick quick rest quick drink and then uh, we'll crack on hope you enjoyed that oh, there we go the fisher mines I'm still in the same woods guys, I've just backtracked a little bit because I know the golf course is just down there I'm going to see if I can find anywhere suitable in these woods to camp um, I'm not very familiar with these woods so let's have a bit of a look round the only problem is the well used the only problem is it's well used by dog walkers and hikers and all that kind of malarkey so I might not be able to find anywhere suitable but we'll have a look round anyway like a badger set there I 
So we're just going to have a wander around now and see if we can find anywhere. All we need is a bit of flat ground and two trees. It's not asking too much. But it is very steep, the hillside, so... I mean, I've done it before, further at the top. So I'll stop waffling now. Oh guys, I've just come across this one. Another hole in the ground. Let me think, guys. Oh, I can. I thought I couldn't turn around then. Doing some investigating today. This is some kind of structure here. It's all boarded up. Don't know what that is. Ah, possibly another mine. Anyway, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not found anywhere suitable here. So um, there's a house literally just over there, and there's a house down here and a gate. So. Uh, I think I might get interrupted anyway. So it looks like it's off to me, no, my usual woods. But um, yeah, we'll just see how it pans out. Okay guys, so as you can see that's me set up, uh, pretty much as standard, I'll explain about the guy ropes in a minute, um, talk about these in a minute, just hung my sleeping bag on the end there, um, but I don't need it yet, that's the only reason I've done that, one tigress, under blanket and the cheap old Old uh, hammock that I've just noticed has got a bag burn in it. That's about right for me. Right, okay, so these things. Some of you like them, some of you hate them, some of you, you know. I don't know if you guys have ever tried using these, but they've certainly helped me out with my rucksack on. About 15 kilos today, which is usually between 12 and 15 kilos, my pack. Going over styles, it was brilliant. Um, these are just the cheap uh, Gellert ones. The Gellert True Fan, or Tri Fan, should I say? Or Gellert, with Gellert being a Welch company, I presume the Y is an, is an I, so Tri Fan. Uh, aluminium. Watched a couple of videos, like I say, on YouTube. And. They really are good. Now, I've lost, I did lose one of the snow caps on the end, so I took, it, took the other one off. It wasn't really serving any purpose uh, anyway. 
walking through fields I did find that they, they stuck quite a lot in the mud um, but once I got used to using them they was absolutely brilliant I uh, can't fault them originally you know I bought them for me trip in the West Islands I'm going to do the West Island way later in the year so um, I thought I'd buy myself some in mountainous terrain I'm sure they're going to help me even more uh, I've also bought a new um, gas stove that I'll be previewing today um, what else is new I think that's about it oh I've got a new kettle as well bought a cook system I'll talk about that uh, a bit later on uh, cooking pans with the kettle and what have you I'll talk about that later on when I do some cooking uh, got a new cup found a little spade on the way in so they're always handy to have for digging holes obviously so I'm going to crack on now clear a little bit of an area here may have a fire later on uh, that's about it for now folks Okay guys, just a quick one on the guidelines. I've mentioned these in another video before. Um, these are from Poundland and they sell them actually as washing lines. Now the pegs that come with them are pretty rubbish, so I just bought them as, wash, as, um, as guidelines. And the great thing about them, I mean this is under tension now, but the great thing is it's looped through this way and up here and you can always pull that through to make it as short or as long as you want. You get a real good length on them I mean I'm going down all the way down to this branch here and I've just wrapped it round just wrapped it round and, and just put the uh, put the hook back onto the line and it's it's pulled me out of the well I mean for this time it's pulled me out of the, uh, the the proverbial a couple of times now these these lines so I bought four of them and now yeah it's quite expensive four guidelines for four quid but I think they're worth the weight in gold I've got one on this side and one over there Let's zoom into that absolutely brilliant no no need for knots really you just wrap it round wrap it round wrap it round and then just hook it on uh, on the other side I've just used a uh, normal bit of paracord which is actually the ridge line for my hammock when it used to have a, um, a mosquito net that's another little mod I've done on this uh, I've got rid of the mosquito net I'm thinking you know in the, in the height of summer if it's if it's that bad for mozzies and midges um, I'm just gonna buy a, uh, a, a hat net to, or a head net mozzie net keep my hands covered maybe with cotton gloves just keep part of your body um, covered really that you don't want to get bitten well no one wants to get bitten once some things start I'll tell you uh, today I've brought my um, my North Face jacket out with me it is, a, it is getting a bit tired this one uh, I think it was about 90 quid when I bought it about three years ago it's pretty much lost a lot of its waterproofing probably needs going through the washing machine with fab sealer uh, it's got a nice fag burn in there as well I uh, brought that and like I said I'm going to do a review on on my cook set got the bottle of gas there this is a Lixader um, gas stove so yeah you know that's that's how it rolls folks I've got my first aid kit on just hanging on there for the time being I'm not using my knife at the moment so there we go Okay guys, so I'm building a bit of an appetite up now, just wood, uh, wood collecting. So I'm going to have one of these, look what we found. Uh, beef meatballs with some Tesco um, chicken and sweet corn flavoured rice. Now what I'm going to do with these, just stand them in a pot of water, just peel the tops off a little bit so they don't explode. And... Uh, 
and it should be all good. Gonna set them in together, let the water boil, and go and collect some more wood while I'm doing that. So this is the Lixida stove, gas stove. I'm just using a, a little bottle of gas on this occasion. Obviously, get bigger sizes of these little gases here. Might just put a bit more water in there. Now, if you go to look out, uh, look what we found website, um, there's someone asked a question on the frequently asked questions can you use the water after your pouches are boiled in it? And although they've done ink tests ink leakage tests from the pouch into the water they cannot guarantee that it will be 100% safe so on this occasion I won't be drinking this water once uh, once my meals are cooked got my little my little um, plate cake tin from Poundland non-stick and now I've started bringing one of these with some wipes in there There's four packs in there, just to clean up after yourself. So, all should be good. Right, I'm going looking for some more wood. Okay guys, the guy, the, uh, the fire's going nice, not a lot of smoke now. Which means I've got something right tonight. It means I'm actually burning wood and not water. So a lot of smoke means a lot of water, so that's, uh, that's good. However, on this side of things, It was taking too long to boil in the bag. This has been at it 20 minutes now. And it should have been well boiling by then. Uh, so I'm just going to have to get used to cooking on gas again. So I've decided to enter the contents of the dinner into there and now it's cooking. So that's may, maybe what it needed. So there we go. Okay folks, so it's absolutely roasting hot now. With rice you can never be too careful. So I've just had to do it in the pan. Generally don't like cooking in pans because you have to tidy up in mess afterwards. Mm. Just what the doctor ordered. Very hot. Now I don't know if I've shown you my knife, fork and spoon before folks. This is actually out of a Yugoslavian mess set which is a, like a square, you get a square um, saucepan with a square water bottle and a square cup that goes on top and this is part of the pack. Now the reason I like these, they are stainless steel but the reason I like this is the knife can be sharpened, it's got a sharp edge here and then serrated there so you can eat your steaks with it. It's got a tin opener and a bottle opener on it. And I absolutely love this. Um, I think I gave the actual mess tins away, but I kept I kept these. And these these are the ones that I use. And they are actually really good. I'll just show you how the tin opener works now. So I've got my tin of uh, sliced water chestnuts and all you do is place this on the side and once you've punctured it it becomes relatively easy Just drain some of that water off it becomes relatively easy to open your can all right, the water's not making it a very good example but
it's like the knife bites one side of the can the knife handle bites one side of the can while the other one does all the work a little bit time consuming but does the trick Just saves you taking an additional tin opener with you. Get so far around and then you can bend the bend the lid back. Get rid of some more of the water. Yeah, towards the end it start, starts speeding up. go tin opened just stay low for a while because I've just seen someone walking up the path my camp's only over there even though I've got permission I don't particularly want to draw any attention to myself so now I know how far my camp is away from the um, from the footpath big spring of Spanish has come bounding through Obviously didn't see me. I was cracking wood at the time. Just wait for about five, five, ten minutes. Okay guys, I just wanted to do a quick review on my rucksack that I'm using at the moment. This is the uh, French Army Mountain Brigade um, Mountain Brigade rucksack, 70 litres. Got this off Amazon for about 49 quid. Uh, they sell them on eBay as well. And the supplier is called Surplus and Lost. The top part is missing, there must be a bag that zips onto the top part. I found this out from other YouTubers that have had similar packs. The top pouch is always missing but it's no, no biggie. Uh, it's got a mesh pocket which is zip, zippable for maps, anything you need to get easy access to. It's an absolute giant bag, I'm used to using my little um, 30 litre molly bag which failed me. Uh, the zips failed so I decided to go for just a singular basically it's just a sack there's nothing that can go wrong with a sack it's absolutely giant big water cowl at the top two side pockets which are made out of mesh kind of rubberized there and there usually keep your 58 pattern water bottles in there got two smaller pockets down at the bottom uh, one is where I'll be keeping my trowel the other one I'll keep my walking poles because it has straps here the webbing on this thing is amazing there's webbing everywhere you look on it on the sides there and there nice I think it's very pretty looking when it's when it's full these are a little bit different than the normal ones uh, different design but again what can go wrong with that it's rubberized at the bottom and inside you get an insert that you can zip in so this is they say this is for your sleeping bag uh, personally I keep the light stuff at the top and the heavy stuff at the bottom the strap on the back the straps on the back are fully adjustable all this is on velcro if I can just show you quickly in here if it'll let me there's a steel bar that runs through and you've got different different holes that you can put like it's webbing it's webbing but it's velcro so you've got different holes that you can put the bar through for your own personalized adjustment little flap goes over there like that that just stops the bar sliding in and out and then velcro on there just clips down like that attaches like that plenty of foam in the shoulder straps there's a chest harness 
part for it as well. I don't know where the other bit of that's gone. It'll be around somewhere. There we go. Again, on one of them little buckle things. The lumbar region is well padded. This doesn't move either. This is this is attached. Some of them, the actual whole thing moves. On mine, I've got a little pouch on the side of it. Sorry about the wind again. All I keep in there is my binoculars. Sometimes I'll keep the keys in there as well, just so I know where they are. It's not uh, velcroed on, it's on loops. Very robust, very robust rucksack. Uh, I've had to do a little mod on mine because this zip was actually broken. Uh, the idea of that is once the pack is very full to over, almost brimming over the top, you can, un you can undo this zip and it allows the top part of the rucksack to fall down a little bit more to give you a little bit more height. So I've actually super glued mine and uh, I've sewn it at each end so it won't come undone. But that's just a little, you know, it's surplus stuff. This is grade one uh, army surplus. So you're going to get little things like that. On the top, it has two more, two more straps with the clips. I usually put my coat on there. My gaiters, that kind of thing. Uh, just make sure you cinch everything down if you're doing that kind of thing, using it, using it like that. But for 70, for a 70 litre rucksack, um, for a similar one in the shops nowadays, like an Osprey, a Burger House, anything like that, for a 70 litre rucksack, they don't do 70 litre rucksacks. It's like 70 litres to me is. Um, it's an unusual one because you don't see many 70 litres. You get 100 litre ones, 35, 50s, 25s for day packs from the army, but it's unusual to find a 70 litre. It's not too big, not too small, carries everything I need it to do. On the whole, uh, mine came with a waterproof cover as well, but it had that many holes in the waterproof cover, it was like a sieve. So I've kept it, may use it as a seat or something like that, you know, something to put on the floor to sit on. But as far as um, waterproof in the bag I don't actually think it really needs waterproofing but it, you know any valuables or anything you want to keep ultra dry like your sleeping equipment anything like that just put them in a rubble sack or a bin liner stuff them in there you'll be fine it has been it has been used extensively um, sorry about this look like a bit of an idiot with that on still it has been used uh, extensively um, Everywhere I've been, pretty much where I've had to carry a load, it's 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 done the job. I, cu I couldn't, you know, recommend a better rucksack than this. It's very robust, like I say. Uh, it's just brilliant, just great. I, I don't I don't know how I managed to get my gear around on 35 litres. To be honest with you, uh, if you look to previous videos, I used to use a gas mask bag for all my food and what have you. That would be on my back, and then I'd have me rucksack, obviously, on my shoulders. So. Yeah, check it out guys, they're brilliant. Just one thing quickly that I missed out before on the rucksack. It does have a bag at the top which is waterproofed. Uh, sorry, not a bag, a pouch on the top which is waterproof and I keep my waterproofs in there and my jacket uh, usually goes in there as well. There's enough room for that. Makes it a little bit bulky on the top but that's fine, I, I can live with that. So that's one little section I missed out. These are really good packs from Poundland. Uh, Scottish beef, something for breakfast they're called. You get black pudding, a couple of pieces, square sausages and four, four normal sausages. I've shown these before. Um, Still a little bit hungry, so I thought I'd uh, just do myself something else. I'm going to cook it on the campfire as well, so a little bit of goose fat. Although you don't really need anything in, in a non-stick pan like this. You get your black pudding with the plastic around it. I'm just going to cook it on the fire, this one. Two square sausages and some little 
little sausages. Of the fry up in the woods, folks, that's what it is. I took the handle off my frying pan, as you can see, just makes it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna whack that in there, let that cook away. I do love this style of cooking on a campfire. We're almost on embers now anyway, so... And then I'll just uh, restock the fire and get it going for later on. There we go folks, you can't beat it. Cooked to perfection. I'm just restocking the, uh, the fire up now for later on. going a little bit now. We've just had the evening chorus of the birds. They're beginning to settle down now. Just heard a blackbird over there. Wobbling away. There's a couple of blackbirds behind me as well. So they're kind of all settling down now. Um, wood pigeons aren't making as much noise. So I'll just let the fire die down a little bit and I'll probably restock that a little later when uh, we're in proper darkness. So I've had all my food. Um, I didn't bring anything else with me, just got brews now. Been using this cup for a change. My Bovril cup, which my missus got me at Christmas. I'll, it's an uh, enamel one. So that's it folks. Um, so I'm just gonna, I've just been sat here for last hour just listening to the birds. You know, it's always good to get out and press a reset button. Get out in nature. Okay guys, I'll bring you back in a bit. Morning guys, it's quarter past six. I've just been awake for about ten minutes. Just been listening to the dawn chorus. Um, went to bed at about, about started to drift off about eleven o'clock last night. 
It's 12 o'clock here, they bought a bike. Oh, scrambler. I think it must have been a farmer moving been sheep around in the fields. So that woke me up. And then I slept right through to this morning, so. Just gonna lay here and listen to the chorus a little bit more. Might even drift off again yet. Okay guys, um, that concludes the camp for today, uh, time is now 20 past 10, like I say I got up at 6, or was awake at 6, and I slept until about 9, so uh, I'm just going to trek out now, if, uh, if you'd like to uh, like or subscribe, you can always press the bell icon down in this corner here. Um, if you click that you'll receive notifications, a little window will pop up and you click receive notifications for uh, when I upload videos so you can do that if you like. So right guys uh, I'm going to wrap it up now, everything's packed up, all the campfire has been brushed over, no trace and if I see anything on the way home then obviously I'll add it in at the end. Well thanks for watching folks and it's been, uh, it's been a good one again.